Last week we talked about stand on faith. Now we're going to talk about releasing our faith. Because there's multiple ways, multiple ways for you to release your faith. There is multiple ways that you can release your faith. But I'm going to focus on today on the one that is the most powerful way for you to release your faith according to the word of God. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So I want to start by saying this. God himself releases his faith by speaking words. God also releases faith. And God releases faith by speaking words. Amen. Take this with me. God, God. releases faith Release by, faith. Speaking words. by speaking words. I want to I show you this in the scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read from the New King James Version, and says this, very easy to find, right? So just go all the way to the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, it says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God created, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Now verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. light. All right, let me just go back because I want to show you something. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you go back and you study, you will see that a lot of scholars, they say that between verse 1 and verse 2, there's thousands of years. Did you ever heard that? You ever heard that before? There's thousands of years between, and I believe that. I believe that as well. Between verse 1 and verse 2, because sometimes we just read the Bible like it's a little story that somebody's just telling a story and happening in sequence right after the other, and it's not like that. The Bible is actually not in chronolo chronological order. Because if you also go back, I'm just going to get a little, a little technical here, but I'm going to move on this very quick. But if you really study, a lot of scholars also said that the first book that was ever written that was in Genesis was actually Job. And Job is a few books down. So there's a lot of things that it's not exactly in order like we just read today. So there is a gap, there is a space between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2. Because if you pay attention with me, it says this, In the beginning God created heavens and earth. Period. The earth was without form and void and darkness. And if you go through the whole Bible, you're going to see that God never creates anything that is without a form. God never creates anything that has darkness. In, in fact, the Bible says that in Him, there's no shadow right. of darkness. There's no shadow of light because he, God is light. If you go outside in the sun, you're going to stand by the sun, not today. But if you go another day outside and you stand in the sun, you're going to see your shadow. Let me tell you something. That would not happen with God. There, God has no shadow. Because he is light. So God doesn't create anything that is void. God doesn't create anything that is without form. And God doesn't create anything that has darkness. Amen. So what happened, Pastor, between verse 1 and verse 2? That's what a lot of people say. And I believe that between 1 and 2, it happened what we see, what we see in the scriptures as the fall of Satan and his angels. The world, the, the, the earth was perfect, but then when, when the devil, he, 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 he was sent down with his angels, it happened just like Jesus said in Luke 10, 18, that I saw the devil falling like a, like a, like a lightning. Yeah. And we know today, we, we know today, if we see a lightning falling somewhere, he's going to bring great damage. So now we're talking about the devil and a third of the angels that were in heaven. So it was like lightning, but it wasn't lightning. What Jesus was saying that was so powerful that brought major
major destruction. It brought major destruction. You can see about the fall of Satan. You can see in Isaiah 14, 12. You also can see in Ezekiel 28, 11. And Jesus said again in Luke 10, 18. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So in between 1 and 2, we see this major devastation. Major devastation. And then we see on verse 3, then God said. Then God said. Then God said. I want to tell you something very powerful. Watch this. Every time the devil does, does something against you, every time you look at a situation you don't like, you got to do like God. You got to start speaking to the situation like God. Because this is what is so amazing. God created the earth perfect. And then the fall of Satan came. Brought destruction. Now the earth is void. It's without form and has darkness. And then the next verse, God says, I don't like what I see. So I want light. So God is starts speaking to the situation that he sees and doesn't like. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little technical right now, but you're going to get it in a minute. So God sees the destruction that is in the earth, and then he said, I don't like what I see, so I'm going to change it. So then God said, you don't, hear, you, don't, you don't read anything before that God was speaking to anything, but then after he saw the destruction that was in the earth, he said, I don't like what I see, so I'm going to change it. So how am I going to change it? By speaking to that ugly situation that the devil caused. Mm -hmm. So God said, let there be light. So now we see that God start, starts rebuilding everything back again. God starts rebuilding again. Watch this. Verse 3, then God said. Verse 6, then God said. Verse 9, then God said. Verse 11, then God said. Verse 14, then God said. Verse 20, then God said. Verse 24, then God said. Verse 26, then God said. Verse 21, verse 31, then God saw everything that he had made and indeed was very good. Amen. You see that? God saw that what he had created ended up being destroyed. And he said, I don't like what I see, so I'm going to change it. How? By speaking to it. So the same thing, you have to do it like God. When you see something that the devil does in your life, when you see a situation that you don't like, you need to speak like God to that situation and expect change to happen. Amen. Then Vanessa said, then Pam said, then Marcia said. Change the situation by speaking. So God released his faith by speaking. If God created us just like him, that, mean, that means we have the same creative power just like him. Amen. 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 Want me to show you that? Let's go to verse 25. Verse 25, he says this. So let's create men. 26. In 27, let's create men just like us. Let's create men just like us. And after God creates everything, creates men, God says, I, and God saw there was good. And God saw there was good. God created everything, the whole earth, the whole garden, everything, and said, and saw, and God saw there was good. After he said in verse 25, he said, now let's create men just like us. Why? So they can experience the same thing we experience. What did God saw that was good? Everything he created? Yes, but more. He saw that was good the fact that he could speak to something that was nothing, that was destroyed, and saw that whole thing changing into what he wanted it to be. God saw that was good, the power of the word. God saw that was good, that you, that you can speak to the invisible and things start happening. And said, so let's make men just like us, our image, so they can experience the same thing. So they can see that they can also be speaking to nothing, be speaking to darkness, be speaking to void, be speaking to something that has no form and see it come to pass. So if God created you just like him, that means we have the same creative power as God and just like God created the world you can create your own world by the power of your own words Amen. 
So the same way that you can create, you can destroy. Mm -hmm. Because there is power in your mouth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat from its fruit. Proverbs 18, 21. Not just life. Death, too, is in the power of the tongue. So every time you see something you don't like, you have to do what? Speak to the situation. Yes. God believes in the power of his word. And what you believe will eventually come out of your mouth. I'm going to say that again. God he spoke to the situation because he believed in the power of his word. And what you believe will eventually come out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. The mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks of the abundance of the heart. So what you believe, what you have in your heart, you will eventually speak about it. If you would miss say amen. amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2, verse 13 says this. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what's written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore speak. You see that? We will always speak about your beliefs. Because we have the same spirit of faith that Jesus had. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives, that lives in us today. Amen. Can I hear a better amen than that? Amen. amen. The same spirit. So since we have the same spirit of faith according to what's written... I believe, therefore, I spoke. We also believe, therefore, we speak. You speak of what you believe. Your words are a reflection of your belief. Your words are a reflection of your belief. Amen. Let's go to James now. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, the NIV version says this, verse 14. Are you there? Yes, say amen. 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 What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? In other words, has no actions. What is good for somebody to say they have faith, but their faith have no action? No action. If you really see this word action or this word uh, deed in the original, it's talking about corresponding faith. So how can you say you have faith, but your faith or your actions do not correspond to your faith? Hello? Yeah. Amen. You with me so far? Yeah. So what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but they have no actions? They have no actions. Can such a faith say can, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or, or daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, verse 7, watch this. In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not a comp a comp uh, uh, if it's not together by action, it's dead. Yeah. You see this? Faith alone by itself. If it's not connected to action, it's dead. Faith has to be connected to action. Your actions will demonstrate or speak about your faith. Say with me, action. In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not connected to action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have actions. So show me your faith without actions, and I will show you my faith by my actions. You believe that there is on, that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that. And they shudder, they fear, they tremble before him. 
you foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without actions is useless? Watch this. Do you want, do you want me to give you evidence that faith without action is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. Mm -hmm. Mm. Watch this. His faith was made complete by his action. Yes. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person, that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? Watch verse 26 now. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without action is dead. As this spirit, as the body without spirit is dead. Faith without action is also dead. You can say you have faith all day long, but if you don't have actions, it's nothing. Amen. Stick with me because I'm going somewhere. It's just my introduction. So now, faith can be expressed in many different ways. Like I said in the beginning, giving to others in need, right? Just like we, we read. Feeding the hungry, clothing the homeless, buy a meal for someone, pay somebody's rent. All these things are actions. All these things are actions. These are ways that you can express your faith in God. But one of the most powerful ways, watch this, one of the most powerful ways that you can demonstrate your faith is by speaking what you believe and not what you feel or see. One of the most powerful ways to demonstrate your faith is by your own words. I'm going to show you something. Let me ask you this question. Is talking an action? Yeah. Yes. Is talking an action? Yes. Yes. According to the dictionary, talking is a verb. And verb is a word to describe an action. Watch this. So talking is an action verb. Mm -hmm. Talking is an action verb. So if you think you have faith, but you don't express by speaking your faith, your faith is dead. Did you get that? Yeah. Did I move too fast? No. So the Bible is talking about you have to have action. So I'm taking you to a total different perspective here because I'm not talking about showing your, 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 your faith by just feeding somebody. You can do that. It's great. But the most powerful way, according to the scriptures, you can, you can demonstrate your faith by speaking. Remember, I told you in the last few weeks that Jesus said what? That you can have faith just like God and speak to the mountain. He didn't say, feed the hungry and the mountain will be removed. That's true. Mm. He didn't say, pay somebody's rent and the mountain will be removed. He said, speak to the mountain. Have faith, just like God. Have the God kind of faith. Yes. <coughs> and speak. So the most powerful way to express or to demonstrate your, your, your faith is by speaking. Is by having action and by speaking the word of God. Because what's in you will eventually come to your mouth. Yes. Amen. If you with me, say amen. amen. So you need to act like God. You need to use your words to express your faith. Use your words to express your faith. And let me just tell you this. Words put things in action too. Words can put things in action. If you get anything so far, say amen. 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 If you're not getting anything, say have mercy. Have mercy. 
Let me just tell you something. No matter what you're going through, do not change your confession. Amen. 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 Your confession of faith. No matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. no matter what you're facing, feeling, seeing, do not change your confession. Why? Because your words will express in whom your faith is. Mm -hmm. Your words will express in whom your faith is. If it's your faith, if your faith is in God, you're going to speak like God. You're going to speak His word. If it's your faith is in your boss, you're going to speak about it. If your faith is in fear, because fear is not a feeling like some people think it is. Oh, I feel fear. No, you don't feel fear. Fear is a spirit, according to the word of God. God said, I didn't give you spirit of fear. I gave you spirit of power. So if you speak about fear all the time. I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that. You're speaking that your faith, you're saying that your faith is in fear. If you're with me, say amen. 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 Your words will express in whom your faith is. But why? Why? Because your faith will always express what's in your heart. Amen. I'm saying this over and over because Amen. you need to get this. You can see what's in somebody's heart just when they receive something that there or like a, a a message or or a bad news, something that they weren't expecting. You know exactly what's in their heart. Because exactly what's in there is going to come out. You're trying to, to, to hang a picture frame in your, in, your, in, your, in your bedroom. And all of a sudden you miss the nail. Your fate will come out. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. You're going to say Jesus or you're going to say something else. <laughs> oh, pastor, that's radical. Yes, we need to be radical. I'm not talking about being radical, crazy people, weird people. Well, we need to be radical about the confession, the words that comes out of your mouth, because it's your life and it's your future that is at stake. Amen. Amen. I don't care what people think. I don't care what the people say. They're not going to live my life. I'm not going to live their life. I'm going to live my future. And according to the Bible, according to the word of God, I can build my own future. So I have to be careful and be radical with the word that comes out of my mouth. Because the words that you speak today are the platforms you're going to step on tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. You want to hear how your life is going to be five years from now? Listen to the words that comes out of your mouth today. So that's why we need to be radical about the words that comes out of our mouth. Amen? Amen. Amen. I told you this. Watch this. Last week, one of the last things I said, I got corrected by God and I need to fix it today. I told you that you need to keep this word in your heart. I told you that you need to stand on it because I told you this. By January 2nd, the devil will come and try to steal that word from your heart. Remember that? Yes. I said that? Yes. And God said to me, that was a good message. But what you said was wrong. Because God said, the devil is not going to wait until January 2nd. The devil comes immediately to steal the word. Mm -hmm. Immediately mm -hmm. to steal the word from you. I told you the devil is not after your kids. The devil is not after your money. The devil is not after your, your belongings. The devil, the devil is after the word. Because if he rubs the word, he gets everything else. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. The Bible says, we read it in James, the, uh, and the, the, the Bible says that, that our faith is what overcomes the world. Our faith, so if he steals the word that causes you to have faith, he steals everything else. Yeah. Amen. That's right. 
That's the Bible. And I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Verse 13 and 15. Mark, Mark 4, 13 and 15 says this. This is a very famous scripture. It's the parable of the sower. Verse 13 says this. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then you will understand all the other parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. God said, he's not going to wait until January 2nd. He would be very nice if he did that, but he won't. Immediately. Immediately. As I'm speaking to you right now, he's trying to steal that word out from your heart. Amen. He's trying to take your mind somewhere else. He's trying to make your focus in the things that you have to do or the things that you have or don't have. He's stealing that, that word because if he steals that word from your heart, your faith will not grow. And then you become an easy prey to the devil. If he has the word, he has everything. Jesus made very clear as the, as the word is sown in people's heart, he comes immediately to steal it. And look what Jesus was saying. If you don't understand that you need to guard the word in your heart and protect it, the devil will take it from you and then you will, won't, you won't, you will not see the victory in your life. Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable of the sower, you will not understand anything else about the kingdom. That's what Jesus was saying. If you don't understand this parable, you will not get the other ones. Jesus was saying how important it is that we keep the word in our hearts. That we protect the word of God. That we protect the anointing so we can build our faith in the word of God. Because our faith in the word of God, our faith in God will cause us to be overcomers in this world. Amen. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. Don't let the devil steal the word from your heart. Tell that your neighbor. Don't let the devil steal the word from your heart. No, say it like you mean it because you don't believe it right now. Mark 4.20 says this. But these are the ones sown on the good ground. And those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100 fold. You see the difference? You see what Jesus is saying in the same scripture? He said the devil will come to steal the word. But those that do not let him steal the word, those that keep the word, that guard the word, that accept the word, they will bear much fruit. They will bear 30, 60, and 100 fold. That's the difference. That's why some people, they're in church every week. They say praise to God every week. They put their hands up, but they don't see th things changing. Because at the minute they receive, the, the moment that they receive the word of God, they allow the devil to take that word from their hearts. Forget it. They forget every, everything that was taught, everything that was preached. And they go home, and now they start reasoning everything. They start trying to, to figure it out with their own hands how to do things, how to get healed, how to get prosperous, how to get how to make more money, how to change somebody's life, and they don't believe the word of God, they don't express their faith by speaking the word of God, and now they don't see the results because they don't live the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because God, Jesus is making very clear, those who accept it, those who receive it, those, those that, that they, they open to get the word and they protect the word, they will bear much fruit. 30, 60, and 100 fold. If you don't get this, Jesus said, you won't get anything else. Because there's no other way to have victory in the kingdom of God if it's not by faith. That's true. Amen. Amen. If it's not by the word of God. I can preach, I can preach many other things. I can talk about your feelings. I can make you cry. I can make you laugh. But then what tomorrow? 
My job is not to make you happy. My job is not to touch your emotions. My job is to teach you how to live by the word of God. Amen. Amen. So you can have victory. So you can live according to what God wants you to live. So you can be according to who you are, your identity. So your life and your mouth and your actions and your fruits can be according to your spirit and by the word of God. Amen. My job is to teach you. And I don't care what other people do. I don't care what other people do in, in order to attract people. If the word of God does not attract people, if the word of God does not change lives, there's nothing I can do to change somebody else's life. And I'm not going to he be here just speaking, trying to do things to call the attention, to be modern, to be this, to call people in and then see they go home and live the same miserable life. I can say it because I'm young. I'm not an old generation preacher talking about young generation. I'm from this young generation, but I made a decision. If, I, if the Bible, if the Word of God, if the Holy Spirit doesn't make a difference, doesn't change people's lives, there's nothing I can do about it. Amen. Because this is not about me, it's about Him. Amen. 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 If one person gets it, if one person is changed, if one person lives this word, they can change this whole nation. They can change this whole world. Do you think that the person that gave that got that got Billy Graham, Billy Graham saved, they had an idea what Billy Graham was gonna become in the future? Do you have an idea? Do you believe that when Rose, uh, Rose and Joe Demola was raising Dave Demola in their homes, they had an idea what Dave Demola was gonna be? If one person gets it, if one person gets this word and understand the power that it's in your mouth, the power of the word of God, your whole life, your family, your nation, this generation can be changed. Amen. 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 And I made a decision to do my best, everything I can in my power, in my natural, to live the word of God and to preach the word of God as it is. If you're with me, say amen. 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 Say this with me. My faith, My faith needs, actions. needs actions. And speaking is one of them. My faith is mostly released by words. For this reason, I need to guard my words. I need to guard my words. Especially in moments of pressure. So I don't speak fear and defeat instead of faith. what we need to do. Yeah. Our faith and its actions and speaking is one of them. Our faith mo is mostly released by words and for this reason I need to guard my words especially in moments of pressure. Especially in moments of pressure. Because when you're feeling pressure, when you're feeling that you're, 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 you're struggling and you're going through something that doesn't change, doesn't change, it's very easy to open our mouth and speak our feelings instead of speaking faith. I need to guard my words, especially in moments of pressure, so I will speak fear and defeat instead of faith. I want to show you something very powerful. I don't have much time, but I want to go as far as I can today. I want you to go with me to, a, to, to Genesis chapter 22. I want to show you Abraham. He went through something very difficult <coughs> where he had many opportunities to open his mouth and complain. And speak his feeling out, his feelings out, but he did it. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Genesis chapter 22 says this. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him. There is a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. This took three days. 
This is a three-day journey. Say, take this with me, three days. Three days. Three days from him to get to that mountain where God told him to be. And this scripture here is a perfect example of Jesus and God. Perfect example. Because if you pay attention with me, we're going to read more. And you're going to understand better. But I just want to tell you this. And you're going to start getting as we as we go. These three day journey, this three day journey can represent many things. Can represent the, the thirty years of Jesus in His earth. Each day can can represent a decade, thirty years, three years also of ministry, and three years of Jesus' death. I'm sorry, three days. That he was dead. Mm -hmm. Three years journey. Three day journey. Mm -hmm. Thirty year journey. Mm -hmm. Stay with me then you're going to get it. Take your son. Your only son. Only son. Sounds a lot like God, right? Mm -hmm. And sacrifice him. Yeah. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey, and took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, see again, it's three days journey. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while, while, while the boy and I go over there. We will worship the Lord and we will come back to you. I want you to, I want you to stop and, and see something with me. When I read the word of God, I like to read very slowly. When I'm studying, when I'm preaching, because we have to see the details of the word of God. God told him, take your son and go up there to sacrifice him for me. And he doesn't say anything to anybody. He gets his son, and then he gets to a point that he tells the servants, stay here. I'm going to go with my son. We're going to go up there. We're going to worship the Lord. And we're going to come back. How can he be so sure that he was going to come back with his son? If God had told him, go sacrifice him for me. He said, I'm going back and come. I'll, I'll be right back. He said, no, no. We will come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. That sounds a lot, a lot like Jesus now carrying the, his own cross. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Stay with me. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Daddy, yes, my son. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abram answered, answered him by saying, God himself will provide the lamb for the offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. I want you to stop and, and, and pay attention to this. I want you to imagine Abraham's heart. When I read this, I started crying. And I read this so many times. I preach on this so many times. Daddy, I, I, I see the wood. I see the knife. Because he saw his father doing sacrifices many times before. And he knew that in order to have a perfect sacrifice, he needed to have a lamb. And Daddy, where's the, where's the lamb? Don't worry, my son. God himself will provide. I want you to get Abraham's heart at that moment. He couldn't speak about his feelings and his emotions to anybody. He's feeling that turmoil. He's frustrated. He said, he has many questions and doubts. Yeah. God, you made a covenant with me in Genesis 
15. God, in Genesis 17, you told me that you're not just going to bless me, but you're going to bless my seed. Now, five chapters later, are you asking me for my son? I want you to understand the pressure. Because he couldn't speak to his wife either. You didn't see that he went to Sarah and said, Honey, I was praying this morning. The Lord told me for us to kill our son. She would have killed him. <laughs> she wouldn't understand. The servants wouldn't understand. The son wouldn't understand. So he had to go through that whole process. Three days. I'm not talking about five minutes. Three days walking. Thinking about it. Uh, let me just go back and say four days because God told him one day and he got up the next day and went. So now four days thinking about it. My only son, he's now a teenager. He's strong. I waited for this promise for 25 years. I waited for this moment. God gave me a word. I was already 100 years old. My wife was 90. And now that he's strong, now that I have him, my, my best friend, God is going to take it away from me. But you don't see any moment that Abraham is complaining. Abraham is, is frustrated. He's speaking his feelings. You know what he said? In the moment of frustration, in the moment of turmoil, don't worry, my son. I don't know what's going to happen, but God himself will have to provide this. Don't speak your feelings. You speak what you believe. You speak the word of God. He said, no, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where is, the, where is the, 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 the lamb for the sacrifice. But one thing I know, God is going to make it happen. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know how I'm going to see this, this changing. I don't know how this door is going to open. I don't know how the miracle is going to take place. But one thing I can tell you, God himself will provide. God himself will make it happen. So you need to use your mouth to speak about the faith that you have in God. Know about your feelings. Because I can assure you, assure you that this man was going through a lot of distress. If you're with me, say amen. amen. When they reached the place, God told him about God that God told him about Abraham built the altar and arranged the wood. And he, he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called down from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he said. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have now withheld from me your own son, your only son. Abraham looked up and he saw in the thicket that a ram caught by the horns. He went over and he took the ram and sacrificed as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide and to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord will be provided. Amen. You see he had many chances, many opportunities to complain, to speak his feeling but he spoke about what he believed in God. God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. Let me just tell you something. You need to be sensitive to the word of God. You need to be sensitive to the voice of God. There's a lot of people killing their dreams because they don't hear God's voice. Mm. Yep. Imagine if Abraham was so focused on what he was about to lose that he didn't hear the angel. Mm. The Bible said that he got the knife. He was ready to kill his son. Ready. He was probably coming down already. But the angel said, Abraham. He said, yes. Don't do anything to your son. There's a lot of people killing dreams. Because they don't hear God's voice. God is telling you you don't have to. But you keep going down with the knife. Because you're so focused on what you don't have. Instead of being attentive to hear God's voice. That he will provide. Imagine if he was so focused, he would have killed his son. No, 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 no. <coughs> I don't 
don't know about you, but this message is getting me excited. Amen. Amen. This message is getting me excited because, let me tell you something, Abraham is no different than you and I. <coughs> and let me tell you something, thank God that God never asked this kind of thing to you and I. And we're going through something a lot less yeah. stressful. But we're so quick to open our mouth yeah. and tell the whole world how we're feeling. We post on Facebook how we're feeling. We'll call everybody so we can tell them how we're feeling, so people can feel bad for ourselves. My father-in-law used to say that misery loves company. You always want somebody to cry with you, to tell you, oh my God, that's, it's so bad, you're such a victim. They need you so wrong. Yeah. Instead of speaking the word of God, I don't know what's gonna happen, but God will provide. I don't know what's gonna happen, but God will do something about this. I don't know how, when, doesn't matter, but God will do something. My God will provide. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about another mother. Can I have a few more minutes? Yes. I want to talk to you about another mother that had everything to start opening her mouth to talk, to talk about her feelings. Let's go to 2 Kings now. I'm dealing with the fathers and I'm dealing with the mothers today too. If you're still here, say amen. amen. I'm not going to read so much about this one here because we don't have much time. But I want to talk to you today about the Shunammite. Remember her? Yeah. I love her. I love this story. I've preached on this so many times. And I always get blessed by it. Because it's powerful. We know that she's a very prosperous, very blessed woman. And we see that the prophet Elisha is going through, is going through her town many, many times. And one day she goes, she gets her husband and said, Honey, I see that this man. He's a true man of God. And he's here doing the work of God, traveling all the time. Let's build a suite for him here on top of our, of our home. Let's build him something so he can, when he's coming through here, he can stop, he can rest, he can sleep, he can get a nice meal, he can take a shower, he can study. So we'll put a bed, we'll put a lamp, we'll put a chair, we'll put a table so he can just rest in there with his servant while he's going through here. So the husband said, yes, honey, that's a great idea, so let's do that. So they did it. They built a beautiful suite for him, and one day he's there just just enjoying it and just just so so happy and overwhelmed by her good or her good action that he says uh, uh, come here my servant let me just ask you something is there anything that we can do for her get his eye come here is there anything we can do for her we gotta do something for this lady look what she did for us we she didn't need to do that and he's like, yeah, that's right. We, we need to do something. Well, did you see? Well, I saw that she's very prosperous. She's blessed. She has everything, but I noticed one thing. She doesn't have a son. She doesn't have a son, and her husband is very old. In other words, if she didn't have it until now, it's not going to happen anymore. It's over. So she doesn't have a son. She needs a son. Great idea. Call her. I'm going to prophesy a son. You know what I like about this, too? You know what's so amazing about this? That he didn't say, this is what the Lord is saying. You're going to have a son. No, no, no. He said, I'm going to prophesy a son. I'm going to tell her she's going to have a son. When you're so confident in who you are in God, when you're so confident about the word of God in you, you don't wait for God to tell you, you know, God is my son. Speak my word now and prophesy because I'm going to do it. Because Elisha learned from Elijah. Because Elijah said, according to my word, it's not going to rain. He didn't say, the Lord told me that it's to pray that we won't rain for three years. He said, no, no, according to my word. So Elijah said, if the prophet Elijah did that according to his word, I can do it too. So now, according to my word, you're going to have a son. She said, no, don't do that. Don't say that to me. You know, don't, 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 don't bring me false expectation. That means she probably tried so many times before and nothing happened in the natural. She was frustrated at a point that she gave up on her dreams. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Have you ever been there that you try, you try, you try, you try to say, you know what? Maybe it's not for me to have. It. Maybe it's just not for me to, to be happy, to marry again, to have a son, whatever it is. 
That's a lie from the devil. And let me tell you something. You probably gave up on your dream, but God did it. <laughs> she said to him, she said to him, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not for me to have it. So don't give me false expectations. He said, let me just tell you something. In one year from now, one year from now, you have a boy in your arms. You have a son in your arms. And according to the prophet's word, it happened. A year later, she had a boy. The boy grew strong, healthy. One day, he gets up and he said, I'm going to work with daddy. They go to the farm. All of a sudden, the kid is there, and he said, oh, my head, my head is hurting, Dad. My head is hurting so bad. My head is hurting. The father tried everything, couldn't do anything, so he gets a servant and said, bring this boy to the mother. Bring him to his mother, because I don't know what's going on with him. And I can tell you this. He wasn't sick before. Because if he was sick, a good mother would never let him leave the house to work in a farm with his dad. He was in perfect health. In perfect shape. So he gets up, goes with daddy, and a few hours later, few hours later, he's complaining about a headache that nobody can fix it. The mother can now, can, cannot fix it. And the Bible says that she's holding the son, she's holding him on her lap until noon, and he dies. So that happened in a process of what, four hours, five hours? From healthy to dead. A word that, was, that came from the prophet. She didn't ask for this. How many times you got into trouble that you didn't ask for? So why am I going through this? I didn't ask for this. I told him not to prophesy a kid in my life. Is that what she did? The Bible says that she grabbed the son. She took him up to the prophet's room, put him on the bed, shut the door, and went to see the prophet. I'm going to have a conversation with God right now. Because you have to understand something. In those days, the prophet was the only access to God that she had. The prophet represented God. So she went to God. You don't see that she called her husband. That she called everybody and said, My son, my son is dead. Call the funeral home. Put on Facebook so we can do something about it. Oh my God, my son, he's 11 years old. He's so strong. God told me. Now he took him away. Oh, blessed be the Lord. She didn't do that. She said, God said he was going to give me a son. He gave me a son. So God is going to have to fix this too. She shut the door. She didn't call her friends. She didn't call her husband. Just like Abraham didn't speak to Sarah about the son. She didn't speak to her husband about the son either. Watch this. Watch this. Verse, verse 22. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the men of God quickly and return. Wow, what a confidence. Just like Abraham said, stay here, I'm going up there and we'll come right back. She said, get me a donkey, get me a horse and get me a servant. I'm going to go see the man of God and I'll be right back. She didn't tell her husband, our son is dead. I imagine that he probably came home and said, how's the boy? I sent him to you. Oh honey, he's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go see the, the man of God and I'll be right back. She didn't say anything to him because let me just talk to the husband now. If you know if your son is dead at home and you don't know how he died, you're going to ask your wife, what happened here? I sent him, he had a headache. Now he's dead? No, you're not going to go to no church. You're not going to go see no prophet. You're going to stay right here. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. You're not going to leave the house, right? That's how a husband will do. But the husband didn't stop her. You know why? Because he didn't know anything. Watch what she said. Watch what she said. He said this, verse 23. Why are you going to go to him today? It's not, a, it's, not, it's not the new moon or the Sabbath. See, he didn't know anything about it. Look what she said. That's all right. All is well. All is well. Her son is dead. But you're not going to see in this whole story for one moment that she's talking about her feelings, that she's talking about 
the present circumstances. That she's talking about death in her home. Everything's okay. Everything is okay, honey. I'm going to go, and I'll be right back. All is well. She sat at the donkey and said to the servant, lead on. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God in Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, Look, Gehazi, that's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your children, is your child, is your child all right? Can't be any more specific than that. She could have just opened her heart and said, no, there's nothing all right in my house. Especially with my son. Gehazi was the one that was there next to the prophet when he prophesied. She could have just opened her heart now. But she refused to speak that. She said, look what she said. Everything is all right. All is well. Everything is all right. When she reached to the man of God, at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. She threw herself at the prophet's feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden from me and has not told me why. I want you to see this. Her heart is troubled. Her heart is troubled, he said. I can see that she's in distress. Her heart, watch this, pay attention. Her heart is troubled, but her mouth wasn't. Amen. Her mouth didn't show. It. She didn't speak about it. Even to the prophet. You know what she did when she recalled the conversation that had in the past. She recalled the conversation. Watch, watch. I'm almost done. Two seconds. Watch this. Verse 28. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? Didn't I tell you, don't raise my hopes? You see, she's not saying he's dead. She said, you remember our conversation 12 years ago? Did I ask you for a son? I told you not to raise my expectation. She's not speaking that. She recalled the conversation. The prophet got it. The prophet said, Gehazi, get my staff. Go to her house. She said to him, you can say him all day you want, all day long. But I'm not leaving here until you go. She said, God, if you don't do it, you started this. If it was a miracle for the, the first time, it's going to have to be a miracle again. Yeah. Until you leave here, prophet, I'm not leaving here. He said, all right, so I'm going with you. He went with her, laid, laid on top of the boy. Mouth to mouth, feet to feet, hand to hand. Nothing happened. Got up and walked in the room, prayed again, and, and, and did the same thing. The boy got up, sneezed seven times. He called the mother said, he's your son. But what I'm showing to you in these two stories, not for one moment, you saw them speaking about their feelings. Mm -hmm. All is well. Mm -hmm. Stand to your feet. the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? Don't worry, son. God will provide. There's another two story though, two stories that I was going to show you, but we don't have time. But maybe next week I will talk to you about J. Aris and the, the woman that had the issue of blood. J. Aris had his daughter about to die. In fact, she died. And I want to show you the details of that story.
So my whole focus on today is that in this life, in this life, you have many, you will have many opportunities to speak your feelings, speak the circumstances. What do you see? What are you, what are you facing? What are you going through? But you have to make a decision. You're going to speak what you see, or you're going to speak what you believe. You're going to speak defeat, death, or you're going to speak victory. All is well in my house. God will provide. Amen. If you're with me, say amen. Did you get anything this morning?